Today's notes are over graphing absolute value functions. So the first thing I want to do is go over the absolute value parent function. And the absolute value parent function is y equals the absolute value of x. So as you recall, absolute value is always positive. So no matter what x is, the absolute value bars will make it positive, which means y is always positive. So where is y always positive on your graph? up here, which is above the x-axis. So that's why your graph looks like that. So let me erase all of this extra stuff that I wrote out here. Now let's go over your domain range and vertex of this absolute value parent function. So your domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So that's your domain. It stretches um, to all real numbers. So negative infinity to positive infinity. Your range is restricted to everything above the x-axis, and it includes this point right here, which is 0, 0. So where are your y values in this function? They're everything greater than or equal to 0. So how do we write that in interval notation? We write it from 0 to infinity, but we include this little bracket here because we're including 0 in our range, right? There is a point where y is 0, 0 to infinity. And now let's find your vertex. So your vertex is the point where your graph changes direction. It is the highest or lowest point of your graph. In this case, your vertex is right here. It's also known as a minimum. So what's the point for that vertex? It's at zero, zero. So the formula that we use to identify the parametric changes for the absolute value function are this right here. So y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k, where a represents your vertical dilation. So that's your stretch or compression. If that a value is greater than one, you're gonna have a vertical stretch. Your graph will look narrower. It'll kind of look like a skinnier V, if you will. If your a value is less than one, but greater than zero, so it's between zero and one, then that will um, indicate a vertical compression. So your, your V, if you will, will look wider, okay? So that'll, it'll be compressed. So then we look inside our absolute value bars at X minus H. That will show our horizontal translation. And if you recall, whenever we looked at transformations of functions, inside those absolute value bars, your horizontal translation, it'll kind of do the opposite of what you think it would. Right, so if it were the absolute value of x plus four, you would think it would move right four, but it, it actually moves left four. So your horizontal translations kind of do the opposite of what you think it would. Um, and then this plus k out here, that k value will show your vertical translation. Okay, how are you moving your graph up or down? And then your vertex can be found at hk. So let's get started on our examples. The Directions state to graph the absolute value function given, then state the transformations from the parent function, its domain, its domain, range, and vertex. So let's look at number one. We have f of x equals the absolute value of x plus two. Well, if we refer back to our notes, this plus two is a vertical translation. So our key point was at zero, zero. That's our vertex. I'm going to take that point and I'm going to move it up two units. That's the only thing that changes from our parent function. If you go back to that parent function, your slope is basically rise one, run one, rise one, run one. It's basically positive one on the right side of your graph. And your slope is basically negative one on the left side of your graph. That's why this is a really good function to go over or to teach in conjunction with linear functions. So the transformation was just a translation two units up. Did it, did it change our domain? It did not. Our domain was not affected, but did it change our range? It absolutely did. The range of your absolute value parent function was zero to infinity, it is now two to infinity. Did it change your vertex? It absolutely did. Anytime you have some kind of translation, 
it will horizontal or vertical it will affect your vertex our vertex is now at zero two and let's move on to number two number two is f of x equals the absolute value of x minus four so now we have a translation that's inside it's inside of our absolute value bars so that's going to be a horizontal translation so remember this right here is actually it affects at x minus h and our vertex is at hk remember so h is actually positive four but in our equation in our equation it says x minus four so what you really need to remember is that if it says x minus four everybody thinks oh we'll move left four nope this is right four so let's move that key point our vertex was at zero zero now it's going to be or reference point for or key point or reference point now it's going to be at four zero that's my new vertex four zero we haven't had any kind of vertical dilation any kind of vertical stretch so i'm still positive one in my slope to the right negative one in my slope to the left so it's going to look just like that the transformation it was just translation four units right did it affect our domain it did not it's still negative infinity to positive infinity range it did not affect the range because we just had a horizontal translation the vertical translation is what will affect your range so we're still zero to infinity however our vertex was changed it's now at four zero let's move on to the next examples Do color. Okay, let's get started on example number three. F of x equals two times the absolute value of x minus five. So we have a couple things going on. First, you know that that right there is a vertical translation. That outside of the absolute value bars is going to move this down five. That's our only translation. So that's where we're gonna move our vertex. Let's go ahead and do that. Instead of zero, zero, our vertex, we're gonna move it down five. One, two, three, four, five. It's now at negative zero, negative five. We didn't move it left or right, only down. This right here, out in front, is our vertical dilation. Because it's greater than one, it's a stretch. So it's a vertical stretch by a factor of two. And I'm gonna write that down. It's a vertical stretch by a factor of two. A vertical stretch by a factor of two. And I'm going to go ahead and write translation. I'm going to say five units down. It's a translation five units down. So I've got my new vertex. It's at zero, negative five. But because I have a vertical stretch by a factor of two, I'm not gonna, my slope is not gonna be up one over one, it's gonna be basically two, up two over one, up two over one. That's that stretch part, it's gonna be narrower. It's like taking a rubber band and stretching that absolute value function. So it kind of elongates it, if you think about it that way. So up two over one to the left as well. So that's like having a slope of negative two on the left side of my vertex. And then let's just connect those points. Did it affect our domain? It did not. It's still negative infinity to positive infinity. Did it affect the range? It absolutely did because we had a vertical translation. So now my range is from, this should be brackets right here, negative five to infinity. And why do we have a bracket there? Because we are including the point when y is negative five. And then my vertex changed as well. It's now at zero, negative five. So let's move on to example number four. So we have quite a few things going on in example number four. The first, let's look at how this, our vertex is going to move. 
So right here, this plus one, remember that's a horizontal translation. It's gonna do the opposite of what you think it would. It's gonna move it left one unit. So this will move it left one, and I like to write that down. Left one, and then what here, what does this do? It's outside of our absolute value bars, so it's a vertical translation. It's gonna move it up two. So left one, up two, let's go ahead and write that down. Translation, one unit left, and two units up. You could be more specific and write horizontal translation, one unit left, and vertical translation, one unit up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move that vertex one unit left and two units up. So when you think about your vertex being H, K, H is actually, remember it's X, it affects it by minus. Well, if this is a plus in my equation, that one is actually negative one. So H is actually negative one. My vertex is HK, which is negative one, two. That's my vertex. Now, right here, this is a vertical dilation. Because it's a number that's less than one, it's gonna be a vertical compression by a factor of one third, which means if that's my vertex that I've graphed on the coordinate plane, I'm not going up one over one. I'm going to go up one over one, two, three. Up one over one, two, three. So that's like slope. And on the left side of that vertex, it's going to have a negative slope of one third. Up one over three. Up one over three. Up one over three. Did I do that right? There we go. And then our domain. Oh, I need to write right here. That's a vertical compression by a factor of one third. Compression by a factor of one third. And our domain, it did not affect our domain. It's still negative infinity to positive infinity. Range, it does affect the range. We moved it two units up, so our range is two to infinity, and it did affect the vertex. It's at negative one, positive two. So let's move on to the next set. Numbers five and six, and these are our last two examples. Let's change color here. Okay, in problem number five, we have quite a few things going on. So first, let's go back to our horizontal and vertical translations. So this right here inside of our absolute value bars, it's gonna do the opposite of what you think it would because it, it's affected by X minus H. So you have to think about this as H is actually, it's not negative three, it's actually positive three. So this is gonna move right three units. This vertical translation is going to move up one unit. So I like to do that first. That's a good starting point. I'm gonna move from zero, zero, I'm gonna go right one, two, three, and then up one. So right three, up one. And now let's move on to our vertical dilations. So this three out in front is your vertical stretch or compression. It's gonna be a vertical stretch. So vertical stretch by a factor of three. So you can think about your slope not being one, it's gonna be three over one, cause it's gonna be three. But then we have a negative sign out in front. What does that do? That will reflect it across the X axis. So it won't open up anymore. Your absolute value graph will open down. So let's reflect across the X axis. So here's what that's gonna look like. I moved right three up one, and instead of opening up, it's gonna open down. So I'm not gonna count up three units over one. I'm gonna count down three units and over one and over one, and I'm gonna do the same over here. And there's what it looks like. So your domain is actually from negative infinity to positive infinity because nothing affected your, it did not affect your domain, nothing has affected our domain thus far. Your range was affected. Because that reflection, we translated it and we reflected it, we flipped it, 
Now our range is from negative infinity. Remember, we write our range low to high. And then that highest point is at positive 1, and we're including it, so we put brackets there. Because we had some translations, it did affect our vertex. Is that 3, 1? And one of the things that I haven't talked about yet is your axis of symmetry. And your axis of symmetry will actually split this absolute value graph in half. And it's the vertical line that splits it in half. So how would we write that vertical line? We just did our linear some linear equations, so it's going to be x equals, what is x equal? x equals 3. That's our axis of symmetry. That's what divides this absolute value graph in half. Let's move on to our last example. In problem number 6, we have a couple things going on here. We have a few things going on here. We don't have any horizontal translation. We do have a vertical translation. This is going to move our graph up 6 units. That's what I graph first. I move from 0, 0, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we have some other things going on. We have that negative out in front tells me what? It's going to reflect across the x-axis, the 2 fifths, vertical stretch or compression. We're going to compress it so it's going to kind of look flatter, not narrower. So let's write all these transformations down. It's going to translate up 6 units. It's going to be compressed by a factor of 2 fifths, by a factor of 2 fifths, and it's going to be reflected across the x-axis, reflected across the x-axis. That means it flips. It's going to open down. So instead of our slope being down 1 over 1 like this, it's going to be down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that obviously it's going to open wider. It's not going to be as narrow. So same as on the left side of my graph, down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's why I like doing absolute value with linear functions because we're talking about slope, really, right? It's still slope. It's just a positive or negative slope. So did this affect our reign, or our domain? It did not. Nothing has affected our domain. It's still negative infinity to positive infinity. It did affect our range because it's opening down. Our vertex is now a maximum value. It's the highest point on my graph. So my range is from negative infinity all the way up to positive 6. We're including that point, and our vertex is at 0, 6. And that concludes your notes over graphing absolute value functions. I know it was a lot, but I hope it was helpful. Good luck.